Yeah, hi, very good morning to all. Uh, my name is Ravi Kumar and I'll be hosting this training. And uh, thanks for your patience and joining for this demo. So let me quickly start with my introduction. Uh, hope you all can see my screen. So my name is Ravi Kumar and uh, I'm based out of Bangalore. About my experience, I have 10 years of experience in IT industry. I do consulting, implementing and administration of Microsoft and VMware product. In cloud services, I manage Azure Active Directory administration migration to Azure AD and also Azure administration and migration to Azure infrastructure, Office 365 implementation and migrating to Office 365 and also on-premises in virtualization, I take care of VMware as well as Hyper-V and Microsoft services, I take care of uh, Windows Server administration and uh, any services or the role running on top of it, I manage it and in messaging, I take care of Exchange Server administration so now uh, when we talk about uh, this certification now uh, wherein we'll be covering this uh, az104 content right so whatever is there in the microsoft portal az104 we'll be covering that so there are brief uh, topics which has been updated here so we'll be covering uh, 15 modules and 15 or 16 modules so this will be 30 plus hours training content and this will be 90% uh, practical oriented wherein we discuss the baseline theory concept and we'll discuss about the service and I'll show you how to host the service. Then even you can try doing the lab from your end. Okay, so that's how the training will be everyone. And the contents are this one, right? So wherein we'll be seeing uh, the overview of Azure means we'll be seeing what is a cloud computing types of cloud services. What is the benefits of cloud computing? What is Microsoft Azure, right? And what are the ways we manage the Microsoft Azure in the module one we'll be covering it up. And also we'll be covering like uh, how do you create your subscription and how do you control your subscription with respect to the access part. And also we'll be seeing like how do you manage the resources in Microsoft Cloud, like moving the source, accessing the resource, what are the possible things we can do it. And we'll be covering the services like compute. In compute we'll be seeing like how to create the virtual machine, how to manage the virtual machine in cloud. And also as a part of automation, we'll be seeing like uh, what is Azure resource manager template and we'll use one template and deploy one virtual machine. Okay. And also we'll be seeing on the calculator part, like uh, if you get any real time scenarios in your day to day activity, wherein you'll be getting a requirement to host any services, wherein you will be uh, required to get the estimation, right? So we cannot just blindly host it on the cloud. Uh, wherein the cost matters there, right? So we'll be seeing the calculator, right? How do you get the estimation for your requirement? And also we'll be seeing into the storage solution, like how you can use the Azure as a storage solution where you can keep your data and you can manage it. And also we'll be seeing like, uh, how do you create a network in Azure? And uh, when you create multiple network, how do you connect each other? And how do you extend your on-premises environment to Azure? We'll be seeing it. And also we'll be uh, looking into the Azure load balancer as a real-time scenario. Like how do you host your application in a load balance way in Microsoft Azure? And also how do you control the traffic flow within your Azure environment using the network security group? We'll be looking into it. And we'll be covering the general active general admin tasks, like what will be your day to day activity with respect to the, uh, the server administration as well as networking administration and also like taking snapshot and creating the images will be looking into it. And also we'll be seeing like uh, how you can deploy the virtual machine in Azure in a high availability services. Okay, so we'll be seeing the bulk okay so we'll be seeing the high availability services like how do you host your virtual machine and also we'll be seeing like uh, how do you automate uh, like the increasing of instance horizontally using the scales that we'll be like covering it up and also we'll be covering two uh, past services one is web application and sql database like how do you create and how do you manage in the cloud and also as a part of uh, identity and access management, we'll be looking into the Azure AD. What is Azure AD? What is Azure AD Premium? What are the features? And uh, how do you integrate your on-prem Active Directory with Azure AD using the AD Connect tool? So we'll be covering that. 
and also we'll be covering the recovery services like uh, how do you protect your on-premises files and folders how do you protect your on-premises server how do you protect your azure workload right so we'll be covering it and also we'll be covering on monitoring and troubleshooting of your vm and also we'll be covering the overline line of containers and kubernetes and hosting containers in the azure platform so these are the topics wherein we'll be covering in this entire training okay so when you see the certification track in microsoft azure no? so az900 which talks about the fundamentals right so and it's a optional certification wherein uh, you can take if you wish otherwise it's not a mandatory one like if you want to learn 104 or any other part. okay so earlier uh, the azure administration was called in az103 and uh, since last year it has been uh, uh, change to 104 with updated contents. Okay, so AZ 104 is the one what we'll be learning in this training. Okay, which is in Microsoft Azure Administrator Associate. So uh, later, if you are planning to uh, do the DevOps, right? So this is one of the prerequisites. So you have to learn AZ 104 content plus AZ 400, then you'll be certified as a Azure DevOps engineer expert. So this is one track to achieve DevOps. And also this is one, uh, what do you say, one uh, uh, stream where we will be managing the infrastructure part in Azure, the Azure administrator. And if at all, if you're looking on development, right? So if you are from development background and you want to make your career as a developer in Azure, so then the content is AZ204, right? So 204, which talks about the developing solution in Microsoft Azure. Okay, so AZ204, and again, if you want to do the DevOps, so this is also plus AZ400, you can achieve the Azure DevOps Engineer Expert. So if you're looking for DevOps, so these are the two ways where you can achieve. And if you are okay with administrator and you want to scale up uh, your technical thing in Azure, so what you can do, you can take up an architect level. Right, so there's no prerequisites for architect, but still, uh, <clears throat> when you take up the architect paper, right? So AZ three and three not three and three zero four. Okay, so these are the two architect paper, right? So <clears throat> here, wherein there is no prerequisite, like if even if you want to start as architect, you can start, but still you require this knowledge or if you have experience working as an uh, azure admin or whatever the contents we discuss so now so where we'll be talking complete baseline we'll understand what are the dependencies and how to create the services what all you can do with that so we'll be understanding that so those things will not be covered here az303 right so this will be covering on the next level on an architect level and there are additional services will be covered in az303 when comparing with the 104 okay i'm just giving you an idea like okay what will be the next what you can do okay so this is the certification track in microsoft azure so there are other tracks also like security there is a different track and also data science there is a different track anyways okay so any doubt any questions on the azure certification part Okay, do so next thing we'll mm -hmm. one question. So do we require any language experience for Azure yeah. I know like I'll, the word mm -hmm. but do, do we require same kind of experience in for 104 or do we don't have to? see Azure 204 uh, 204 no AZ 204 wherein you will be uh, uh, it's a core level of developing solution wherein uh, you should have a developer skills. Okay. But for 104, we are not developing any solution here, but we'll be managing the infrastructure. That is one thing. And same time, even we required some sort of uh, programming language like PowerShell or Shell or whatever. So that will help you to make your day-to-day -day work easier. Okay, but we are not developing anything here. To manage your infrastructure, uh, to do some sort of automation to in your infrastructure, we might, we will be using 
command line uh, things like PowerShell or shell command or any other command line utility. Not, not like any language, right? Like .NET or something. We don't require experience in that, right? Yeah, not required that. See here, uh, it's purely the administration part. So if you see this content, you know, we're not developing anything. Only wherein we'll be covering one uh, programming language here. Uh, means we'll be covering something called uh, ARM templates. Okay. So this is based out of a JSON. So here, uh, this will help you in terms of automation. So, but it's not a mandatory, but if you know this uh, uh, language, no, that will help you in terms of your infrastructure management part, but there is no mandate on anything here. But as a part of your job requirement, they will be asking any one command line uh, language like PowerShell or Shell, right? And also they'll be asking you automation part, automation like uh, ARM templating, those will be asked. So what do we use for ARM templates? What kind of language? JSON. JSON. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any any questions on the certification track? Let me know. Okay. So now <clears throat> who can learn and who can start working with Microsoft Azure? So, uh, if you are an uh, experienced person in any technical domain like uh, Windows, network, storage, security, or even if you are uh, from a different technical background like SAP management, Oracle, or DBA, right? And also if you are from non-technical background or if you are a fresh year, right? So Azure admin is also a good start for a fresh year for experienced person or expertise in any domain, right? So it's a good start for anyone. So anyone can start learning and they can start working on it, okay? But still, there's a prerequisite where you have to learn. So what are the prerequisites? You should know the basic OS management like Windows and Linux, wherein you'll be creating the virtual machines. And you should be knowing like how to connect and do some basic uh, administration tasks, not beyond that. Okay, but if you know in, in depth, that's fine. I'm just telling you like, uh, if you don't have knowledge, then you have to adapt that, okay? And also you should be knowing what is the virtualization and what is the virtualization concept. So if you deploy a virtual machine, in the sense, what all things will be there on backend, virtual disk, virtual RAM, or virtual uh, <clears throat> network, right? So those concepts you should be knowing in a high level, but if you know on expertise level or moderate level, that's also fine. Okay, and also you should be knowing about the storage concept and the networking, right? So mainly the networking, the basics of networking, what is IP address, types of IPs, and classes of IP, and basics of subnetting and the network devices, what it functions, right? What is the network switch, router, and the firewall, what it does, right? And also you should be knowing some other concepts like uh, uh, what is Active Directory, DNS, and what is encryption, why we use it and what is the requirement of backup and what is the disaster recovery right so these are the concepts wherein you should be knowing and uh, if you don't have any idea you can start learning this along with the course or if you need any assistance on that you can ask me i can guide you okay so these are the prerequisite so if you have this base on right yes along with this content wherein you'll be good to the start your work or you can start your career as a azure admin Okay, and also you in the real time, if you see the job requirement, no, they'll be asking for uh, uh, any command line tool like PowerShell or any other programming language to manage your infrastructure, right? So here you're not developing anything, you're managing your infrastructure. And uh, same time, wherein the automation will also be asked. So wherein you can automate, like you can create your templates and you can make your work easier, right? So by creating that template. So if you know the ARM template and JSON in that, that will help you. Otherwise still, if you're able to read the template, what exactly it's going to do, then you can manage that. We cover the basic things. Okay, so this is about the prerequisites. Any, any doubt, any questions on this? Uh, Ravi, as a ETL resource, uh, first we need to learn uh, 104, then what is the next course we need to learn? 
Okay, so what exactly you want to do? Like, are you looking for a DevOps or you want to be an uh, Azure admin and later you want to enhance your skill? What is your... Yeah, de yeah DevOps part. Okay, if you're doing DevOps, then uh, if you want to learn DevOps, then 104 plus AZ400 or 204 plus AZ400. These are the two ways where you can achieve the DevOps content. Okay. Means uh, in Azure, no, there are many services are there. Okay. So according to what exactly you want to uh, do, since like uh, as an Azure admin, so what are the administration tasks can be taken in the infrastructure? It has been designed and those services are covered there. And also as a part of DevOps, what all the skill set you should know? So those uh, services are added there. So if you do this admin plus DevOps means the contents are divided into two parts, right? So when you once you, once you do this both, then you'll be having a good amount of knowledge in order to do the DevOps management in Azure. All right. So now, uh, like whoever is a new person, right? Uh, understanding the cloud. So what will the cloud admin do? What will be his day-to-day -day job? So what cloud admin will do now? He will be managing the cloud infrastructure, not only cloud infrastructure. So even there will be a chance wherein you will be touching your on-premises infrastructure as well, like your on-prem server, network, switches, whatever. Okay. And in cloud, you'll be managing the complete IT lifecycle model, right? You'll be developing, you'll be deploying, you'll be testing, and you'll be hosting, you'll be updating, and you'll be decommissioning, right? So entire IT lifecycle model will be managed in the cloud. So you'll be involved in that. And wherein you'll be getting a request from the end user to create some services like configure the networking and uh, configure some restriction in the network deploy the storage solution, deploy the virtual environment like virtual machine and other services in cloud wherein you'll be getting the request and you'll be addressing it. And also wherein you'll be interacting with uh, other partners or vendors with respect to the services what you use in the cloud. And also you'll be managing this Azure from uh, two way. One is through the graphical user interface, through the browser or through the application or you'll be managing through the command line like PowerShell or shell command, right? So these are the ways wherein you'll be managing Azure. Okay, so basically you can say like you'll be managing the operating system part in cloud or the virtual machine in the cloud and everything in the cloud is a virtualized and you'll be managing the storage solution and networking. This, these are the baseline wherein you'll be working on. Okay, so let's move on. And uh, today we'll just see the demo of the uh, cloud part, right? So we we'll just cover some basic one or two slides, then I'll show you one real time scenario like how do you host the service in cloud and how do you consume it? So if you have any doubt, any questions, you can stop and you can ask me anytime. What is the advantages of Azure as a comparing to AWS? Okay, see Azure, AWS, and Google and other cloud also know wherein um, all these three guys are the cloud service provider wherein whatever the services you want to host or whatever the application you want to host, wherein you can host in the Microsoft Azure Cloud. Okay. And also you can host the same thing in the uh, AWS as well as uh, any other cloud. And uh, the major difference or we, we, uh, like I can say, uh, if you know one cloud, you can manage the other, other cloud as well. The dif difference or advantages in Azure now, wherein Azure is flexible to manage and also costing perspective, like we can say the Azure or AWS this is our secondary. But when you see the usage perspective, you know, Azure is uh, pretty straightforward to use and very easy to manage it. Okay. And also uh, AWS is also like, they are very long back in the cloud market and also Azure has been stepped in later, but still now you can see Azure is also picking up very good like the consumption of Azure services. And also we can see like Azure and AWS are leading in the market as a cloud service provider. Okay. Yep. 
but what i can say like uh, the features here and there will vary like if you want to host a compute services it's the same in azure as well as aws and when uh, whenever you're using other services like load balancing and uh, route 53 or in uh, azure it is called with the different terminologies right so that's how it will vary apart from that there is so much uh, differences but azure what i can say is it's pretty comfortable to manage with respect to the ui and other perspective and also costing wise yes every cloud provider here and there small changes will be there in the costing perspective okay and also uh, if you uh, please uh, please leave your contact details uh, your email id and phone number so that uh, we'll be getting in touch with uh, you for the upcoming session and also this training batch is going to start from monday 7 a.m okay all right yeah this training will run uh, every day one hour monday to friday so 30 hours is the minimum so it can go beyond that it depends upon the lab scenarios okay so we can say four or oh, sorry six to seven weeks we can cover this training part okay so now uh, let's try to understand a basics of cloud so whoever is new so they'll get a good idea on this so now what is cloud computing so here when we say cloud computing we are referring to the public cloud like azure aws google or any other cloud okay so first thing we'll try to understand computing right so now if you want to host your services right wherein we require the compute resource like cpu memory network storage and operating system and where you can host the services so when you say a cloud computing right so the same resources to host your services wherein the resources will be hosted on the cloud platform or on your vendor so wherein the azure AWS, Google are the cloud service provider or the cloud vendor, wherein this resources we are going to consume on their platform and wherein we'll be hosting our services rather than keeping the infrastructure in our premises. In a sense, if I'm hosting a uh, one e-commerce website, right, and I don't have any infrastructure and I don't have a place, so I directly create on the Microsoft uh, Azure. So what will happen there? I'm, con I'm going to consume the resources in their environment. I'm paying for what I'm using, okay? Instead of keeping all the resources in my premises, okay? So in simple way, the cloud computing can be defined as a delivering computing power, CPU, RAM, network, storage, operating system, a service over a network, usually on the internet, right? So we are consuming this over the internet. So rather than physically having the computing resource in your environment, means when you say cloud computing, means when you're hosting some services in cloud we are not keeping anything in our on-prem but the real-time scenario wherein uh, we can see the hybrid wherein you keep some services in on-prem services some services in cloud so that is different when we talk about the cloud the resources will be consuming and managing over the internet so now what are the benefits of cloud computing and why in today's time the cloud services adoption is very high right the main reason is cost saving okay so how does the cloud will save the cost right so when you see that so let's consider the same example if i want to host an e-commerce website like flipkart or amazon for my organization okay uh, so what we are going to do uh, what i require is i require a physical space where i can keep my it infrastructure like a data center and I required a compute storage network and to host this I required uh, uh, the other networking thing like uh, security like firewall and uh, also you require a power supply and for the power supply you require a backup you require a cooling right and uh, so you have to invest a lot of money and also you have to invest a lot of time so once you place your order wherein you'll get some time to get your required IT infrastructure to in your premises and once you get your infrastructure like your IT components then you require a skilled workforce to configure that and then you can host your services so you have to invest a lot of time a lot of money and if at all if something 
is not working well when you want to shut down right so whatever you invested will go under loss so when you see the same thing on the cloud right so on a day one i can create my account and i can create whatever the services i want on demand in the cloud like compute network storage or any applications and whatever the application i want to host i just need to have the code or the application code where i can connect and i can start consuming or hosting my services from a day one okay so as and when you required additional resource you can add whenever you don't require the resource you can remove right and you'll be paying only for what you're going to consume with the number of hours right so that's how wherein you can save the cost but still cloud is not cheaper right wherein uh, when you see um, whatever the server, whatever the resource you want to host in your on prem you require the same and also even they'll be looking and they'll be making profit out of it right and <clears throat> When you see the other perspective, you know, like if you want to host in your premises, you want to buy the hardware, right? It totally works like your uh, capex model. And uh, <clears throat> whenever there is a hardware refresh or whenever you want to renew your AMC and to manage this IT infrastructure, you require an IT person and their infrastructure part and also your licensing. And whenever there's a new version comes, you have to upgrade your license. And also your downtimes, which can cause your business impact, right? So unplanned or planned outages. And uh, also when you see all this perspective, you know, wherein the cloud works in a cheaper way, right? So wherein it's a total operational model. So whatever the service you're going to spin up or consume and whatever the duration you're going to use, so it'll be charged only for that, okay? So the potential of cost saving is a major reason of cloud adoption by many organization. Cloud computing gives the freedom to use services as per the requirement and pay only for what you use, right? So whatever you want, you can consume and you'll be paying only for what you have been used. So due to this, uh, the cloud computing has become possible to run IT operation as a outsource unit without much in-house resource. So cost saving is one and also performance, right? So when you want to consume a service with whatever the capacity you know you get very good capacity and also whatever the performance you're expecting you know you'll be getting that maintenance any unplanned outages planned outages so wherein the uh, microsoft azure or any cloud provider means when you say the microsoft azure so they assure 99.95 percent of time sla when uh, whatever the service you create apart from that wherein any application you're hosting then you have to plan and host in a such a way you can achieve 99.99% of uptime SLA. Software updates, you do not to worry. Either it can be uh, the firmware update or your hypervisor update, your OS update or your application update. So based on what type of service you're going to use, the software updates part taken care. And also uh, OS part, right? So in Azure, you can host any OS, Windows or Linux base. Yes, you can host it. And backup and recovery. Now let's take example. You are running your infrastructure. So wherein when you see the backup is a lengthy process. What we do, like back it up to tape drive, and uh, ship the tape drive to other location and keep it safe, which can withstand with any sort of disaster where your data will not be lost. So here you can keep it simple. So what you have your data, you can use the cloud as a uh, what you say backup solution. Take a backup and store it in cloud. So that is also another use case of cloud adoption and also disaster recovery. Now you are running your application in your premises and in order to have a business continuity plan wherein we'll be planning to have a disaster recovery site. So instead of investing another uh, location and uh, getting the IT infrastructure and uh, investing so much money, what you can do. So whatever you have your critical workload in on-prem, you can replicate to Microsoft Azure and you can use cloud as a disaster recovery site and also cloud is always scalable so today I create one VM and you can go on with whatever the capacity you want and also data safety right so any data which you are moving towards the cloud right so the data on transit and whatever the data is sits on the cloud right so data on rest will be encrypted you do not to worry on that right so these are the like major benefits what we can see and people are adapting the cloud services okay any doubt any questions on this
So let's see uh, creating one service in cloud. Okay, Azure alone is sufficient to get a job. So uh, if you're looking for Azure admin, yes. So whatever the contents we are covering, so this is good. And also nowadays we can see there are additional things will be asked like uh, say a CD pipeline integration and managing the containers. And also there are a few other services will be asked. But still when you say Azure, uh, administration whatever the contents we are covering yes it's a good amount of knowledge what you will get where you can manage your azure infrastructure but still no when you see the market right so uh, i cannot just say that okay i know only this so we have to update and whatever has been requested or whatever has been asked so we have to update our skills but still uh, <clears throat> when you see any job description about the azure admin now so you can see the content so there will be a few contents will be asked additionally it's a part of devops thing so that's fine we can keep it aside so apart from this content uh, one powershell or like one command line tool you should be knowing and uh, arm if you know well and good automation so these are the two things will be additionally asked other than the azure admin whatever the content we cover it's a good amount of knowledge required. So material, so whatever the, <clears throat> the PPDs uh, I have, I'll share with you. And anything else required, you can let me know. I uh, will provide that. For CACD, uh... Uh, we need to learn uh, this course or CACD is a part of DevOps? Yeah, it's a part of DevOps. It's, it's not admin part. Okay. All right. Any any other doubt? Any other questions? Uh, hi, Ravi. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, please go on. Uh, any time period like uh, expiry date and certification if you do certification any one year or two year like that or it's permanent Probably. it's two to three years i guess right so there is no expiration for the certification so let's take example <clears throat> so uh when you see the last year now uh, az103 got in in the sense uh the az103 was a azure admin certification which got expired in the last year and they come up with a new one az104 so what they have done they have done the modification in the content comparing to az103 so if you have certified with 103 still you are a microsoft azure certified in 103 okay so the updates whatever the new things has been added no that is there in the 104 so if you want to enhance in terms of certification then you can give the 104 certification that's how it will be there so now 104 so we can take 2020 uh, or 2021. So next two years or this certification will be there. So if there is some modification, they'll come up with a new code, then you can take it up the new one. Yeah, any, any other doubt, any other questions? Okay. So uh, please leave your contact details, your email ID and the phone number so that we can get in touch with you. And also this training batch will be starting from Monday, 7 a.m. Okay. So now uh, let's see creating one services in cloud, how we can consume it. Means, uh, let's take example, I have a requirement to host an application and uh, I need a, a virtual machine. Right, so let's take example. I required a Windows Server 2012 R2 with two core, eight GB RAM, and I want this server to be hosted in some part of US. So we'll take it up east part of US. Okay. So let's see how to log into the Azure portal and how to create the virtual machine Windows Server in Azure Cloud in East US, and also we'll see how do we access that. Okay. Then you'll get some idea whoever is very new to the cloud. Okay, so we'll do with the graphical user interface. So I have already logged in, uh, that's fine. So your login or your UI portal will be portal.azure.com. So once you type in your email ID and password, so we'll 
get inside this portal. So it's already been logged in. That's fine. Okay. So this is one way wherein you'll be managing your Azure. So maximum we use the UI. So whenever you do multiple tasks, in that case, you'll be using the command line utility. Okay. So now let's try to create a virtual machine here. So I type here for virtual. So you can see virtual machine console. So let me create one virtual machine here. So here creating one virtual machine, we can see here, but there are a lot of other background things will be done, like the networking and the storage and the machine will be created. Okay, so all this will be explaining in depth when we go to the virtual machine module topic. So for now, we'll directly deploy the virtual machine. Okay. So let me create one resource group. I'll say this is my VM lab. Okay, so what is the server? Let's say this is my web server. Okay, which region in Azure you want to host? The Azure uh, is providing services more than 40, 40, 44, 42 plus regions across the globe. So let me create this in uh, East US. Okay, I don't require a high availability now. So what is the source, right? So I'm going to select the available, uh, uh, the OS binaries. So I'll select here, Windows Server 2012 R2. Okay, when you have option to use your custom images, like how do you do in your on-prem, we can do that also in cloud. So what is the configuration you want? So you can go with whatever the configuration, okay? And let me create the user account so that I can log into this machine once it has been deployed. Okay. So other option, we'll just leave it as it is. Okay. That's fine. Just create that. So now you can see I've been instructing in this portal to create a Windows Server with some sort of hardware configuration in the east part of US in Azure Data Center. Okay, so now here, if you observe, I'm not touching any of their physical infrastructure like data center or the physical server or the hypervisor or anything. Okay, so that will be taken care by the cloud vendor. Okay, so once you deploy this machine, once you log in, from here you are going to manage. Means this is an example of IAS service, infrastructure as a service. And it is same like how do you deploy a virtual machine in your on-premises like Windows or Linux and how do you access will be the same in Azure as well, no difference. Okay, and but there are some other services like platform as a service, software as a service, right? So that depends upon like what type of uh, service you directly want to host, you can host it there. And also we can say uh, the Azure Cloud right as a software defined data center right so once you create your azure account so that will become your uh, data center boundary so you can deploy your services in any region in microsoft azure like uh, us india or europe region or in that fact any any location you can host the, your services yeah any doubt any questions on this So now you can see the server is deployed. So let's log into the server. So this is the IP address of the server. So let me connect from this. Okay. So let me try to take RDP. So if it's a Windows, you'll be taking RDP. If it's a Linux, you'll be taking SSH. So I'm using one of the uh, <clears throat> uh rdp application here so the credentials are already stored i'm just connecting to this uh, hi ravi may i know the app what you use for rdp connection okay so uh if you're using windows machine you'll use a, a default a remote desktop application which is available in the os so here in my Mac, I have downloaded this uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop application. So I'm using this. 
okay windows you. you'll have a regular application on the remote desktop connection the same thing so if it's a windows machine let me show you here it's the same thing we use now uh, so you can see this is a remote desktop application if you are using a windows machine the regular way you'll be connecting it so no difference so here uh, if you host a virtual machine now there is no difference like how do you manage your on premises so same way you will manage your you, you will be adding this machine to your active directory domain you will be accessing from your ad credentials right so it's a regular way if it's a linux also is the same you can use any ssh client and you can connect from your uh, local machine and you can access it okay now you can see this is a windows server 2012 r2 which is hosted on microsoft uh, data center in east us so from here onwards i will take care like installing other applications and managing the things okay so that's why i was telling you like there is no expertise level required in terms of hypervisor uh, management or your network management but still if you know the knowledge that's well and good okay because here we are not touching any hardware resources everything we manage in a software based or a software uh, defined data center what we can say okay yeah any doubt any questions yeah also uh, please share your details ram krishna santosh and rk okay so that we'll be getting in touch with you for the next meeting details otherwise we'll not be having connection with you okay so you can share uh, privately with the uh, visual path administrator okay santosh i can see you have been sharing sorry for that okay santosh singham is not shared santosh has shared it yeah ravi uh, the what is the daily duration it's uh, 7 to 7 to 8 1 hour a day monday to friday so we'll be covering five hours a week okay five hours a week yeah so total content will be 30 minimum 30 hours it will take yeah so oh, practical session also in this uh, period only right uh, ravi yes yes so now we just saw now like uh, we'll cover the theory part right so some baseline we have to understand the theory and also the services part also will be covering theory then i will be showing like how to uh, deploy the service just now we created the virtual machine no? so same way uh, whatever we can create in the cloud so everything can be deployed so i can say 90 percent will be practical oriented so if you want to say that okay how do i do uh, this scenario here then i can assist on that have we got login and all the we do we get from visual path or we have to register by ourselves for the uh, your azure account right so you have to register yeah. by yourself i'll be helping out to how to create your accounts okay okay any any doubt any other questions you have what about the fee details? Uh, fee details like uh, our coordinator will, uh, uh, you can contact to the coordinator. So they'll be helping out with the fee structure and other things. Yeah. Okay, so please uh, share your details. Uh, Ram Krishna, Santosh Singham and RK, if you have not shared. Okay. Yeah, you can see uh, there is a contact number of Visual Path Admin, right? 9704455959. You can reach to this number so they can help you out with uh, the, your fee part. So any technical thing you want to know, you can ask me. I can uh, help you out with that. Hi, Ravi. If you want to learn DevOps, uh, what you have to do have to learn parallelly with azure or, or a combination of azure okay see uh i would suggest uh, you learn uh, uh, admin and then you take a uh, devops if at all if you're working and if you are not working like you you have a good amount of time then you can learn both parallelly but you can go one after other one so that you'll have a track or you can take like uh, 
you can start uh, admin now and after a few days you can start up the devops also so that uh, parallel you can learn both but main thing okay. is now uh, wherein uh, you you get a place right so here you can see so this is my azure account right so the much you do practicals and uh, you can explore that much okay and also any guidance with respect to the uh, certification will be helping you any guidance uh, with respect to the resume building or interview preparation will help you on that uh, ravi by this 104 how mm -hmm. uh, how good opportunities we may get for the job uh, outside yeah you get a lot of jobs you can search here and also no see uh, what i can say here <clears throat> uh the cloud adoption is very much uh, like from past five years okay and uh, also uh, in future the cloud adoption will be very high because whatever the direction you can see you now uh, and also due to this uh, covid and other things right so we see a lot of uh, work from home option so means the adoption of it is become very high and also adoption of cloud services also will become very high okay like if you take example of your email services now now nowadays uh, no one will use in on prem the usage of on prem email services is reduced so people are completely migrated to, to migrated to the cloud based like office 365 or any other email services so maximum people are consuming office 365 okay so uh, aws and azure are leading in the market and uh, yeah other like gcp is also coming up so i don't i don't i, I don't I, i'll not only insist to go a azure uh, whichever you are interested yes but cloud market for next uh, uh, 10 years now or like i can say 5 to 10 years the adoption will be very high and also you can see a lot of opportunity and cloud adoption is also very high <clears throat> you can see there are a lot of openings in azure admin and people are moving out to Azure Admin. Okay, you can search it. So when it comes but to cloud, I no, not only mm -hmm. I have prior uh, knowledge of AWS, but I don't get that much calls for uh, AWS. That's why I'm. I was thinking for Azure, and I'm coming back to again to Azure. So that's the reason I asked you this question. <laughs> No, actually, uh, in fact, no. What I what we can see is uh, AWS and Azure, uh, like cloud adoption. These two services are being adopted by many organizations. They are adapting it. Okay, when you say when you want to learn GCP and all, no. Uh, I don't say that uh, GCP is not been used, but the opportunities in the market is less in GCP, and uh, AWS is very high in the sense they are been from many years, and Azure is also doing very good. So when you compare the console of uh, management of AWS and Azure, no? Azure is pretty straightforward, document instructions and all good, right? So you can learn and you can start uh, working on your services. So that is the advantage of uh, Azure. Okay. But still, see, if you know one technology, you know, like uh, one cloud services, you can manage the other cloud also. There is no much architectural difference but only the services name and uh, the services features in the console and the management console will vary apart from that the maximum like if you want to deploy a load balancing solution the load balancing concept is same across your azure or aws or google or your on-prem and if you want to host uh, any uh, what do you say firewall services is the same but there are new features like uh, platform as a services we can see that features might vary like what we have in web app in azure so we can have a something else in the AWS. Okay. All right. Any any other doubt? Any other questions? Let me know. Is VMware mm -hmm. knowledge will help you for learning quickly the Azure? Yeah. So that's what I told you. Like uh, for Azure administration, uh, uh, there is no expertise required if you know uh, like if you are very good in the vmware that's good in the sense uh, see uh, cloud administration is not only part of your the cloud admin right wherein 
uh, when you want to move your infrastructure from on-prem to cloud, right? So if your on-prem is running VMware, so your knowledge will help you with terms of integration of migration services and troubleshooting any migration related issues. All right, so that will help you. Once uh, when you see in a real time now, like if you are in uh, if you are in zero in networking, let's consider that. And networking is a wide topic, right? So even in the cloud, you have to deploy a network and you have to logically think and how your connections should be established, right? So if you have a good knowledge in network, so that will give you more advantage. Or if you have a zero knowledge, wherein uh, in the cloud, we don't do much networking thing, but still the concept you have to understand. So when you say like you're good in VMware, yes, definitely that will help you in terms of uh, any migration you're doing in on-prem to cloud. But whatever you do in the VMware in on-prem, no, you don't do it on the cloud. It means the cloud is a ready-made solution where you don't manage the hypervisor or you don't manage the HA on the host level and all. So here you directly create the virtual machine you manage, right? So that is what your scope means when you go to as an IAS platform. These are the only topics is covered as part of the exam, is it 104? So there are a few more topics, so we'll include that. So this other core components will be covering this. See, we'll be focusing on AZ 104 content, whatever is there in the AZ 104 in the Microsoft uh, official website that will be covered. Okay, no worries. If you have any doubt, any questions, now you have the contact number, please reach us. So we'll be helping out with your queries. Okay, so upcoming details will be shared. So Monday we'll be starting this batch. Uh, by Monday 7 a.m. we'll be starting this batch. Okay. All right, so any doubt, any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just wind up here. Okay, all right. Thank you guys. Thanks for your time. So any queries you can uh, write us. So we'll be in touch with you. Okay. And thanks for your time for joining this demo. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Sure.